A sense, a spirit, a feeling. There is something in the air, above the skies and on the ground. This society, it's an open door and the people are accepting to welcome such an auspicious visit. Time to the second, protocols in place. The finishing touches applied. Ready and waiting are a people and a nation. At the behest of His Majesty the King, a very special guest is bound for Bahrain. He's a man recognized the world over. A figurehead adored by millions. His Holiness, Pope Francis of the Vatican. The first Pope in history to travel to Bahrain. Adasatil Baba Francis, Baba al Vatican. His Holiness, Pope Francis of the Vatican. In the nine years since he became head of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis has traveled to five continents and visited more than 50 countries. But his trip to Bahrain is very different. His visit is meant to be a symbol of the need to seek allies for the cause of peace and brotherhood. In a world divided like never before, Pope Francis will attend an historic bid for global peace. This historic visit will represent this message not only to the Middle East, but to the whole world. Peace to the humans of goodwill. To mark this momentous event, His Majesty the King and the Pope have joined together. It's a dream coming true. For the very first time, they are allowing access inside a papal visit. I can't believe that I'm going to meet the King and meet Papa Francis. This is one of the biggest moments that my life does. <laughs> I, for one, I, I can't wait. It's going to be very exciting. The first thing that came to mind when I read about this wonderful visit was, it's about time. In the desert heart of Bahrain stands an extraordinary natural phenomenon. You'll always want to protect it and uh, always uh, keep it safe. Bahrain's tree of life has been here for as long as anyone can remember. Starved of water, a tree like this shouldn't survive in a desert. But this one does. It's a symbol of Bahrain as a miraculous place. A fertile paradise. Where people settle, civilizations grow, and religions can flourish. Bahrain has always been on the crossroad of different cultures, even the religions, and that has marked the whole society, I think. The tree of life finds its roots really in a very deep history. To have an, a true interfaith dialogue, you have to have an identity. And an identity is not only national identity, it's actually historic identity, it's cultural identity, it's the identity that shapes the way you conceive your own values. In the capital city of Manama, Futuristic skyscrapers dominate the landscape. A 
symbol of Bahrain's status as a modern financial hub in the region. But beneath them exists a society that reaches back centuries. To walk through its streets is to be enveloped in an atmosphere of devotion. For here, there are houses of worship for every kind of religion. Religion is not what the faith between you and God, but how you deal with others. Together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and always. We are all united. We all believe uh, strongly that we are we are unique and we are a model and we are very, very proud of it. The spirit of faith intertwined emanates out of Manama and touches all parts of the kingdom. It's something that makes Bahrain unique across the Arabian Gulf and beyond. The papal visit coincides with the most important religious event Bahrain has ever seen. The people of Bahrain know how important that visit is to Bahrain and to them. They realize that the Pope doesn't go to places where they will not recognize the way he would see the world as open and coexisting. At His Majesty's invitation, faith leaders from across the world will descend on Bahrain. During a three-day interfaith forum, the greatest thinkers and theologians will devise a roadmap for global peace. Among a host of other events, the Pope will be the guest of honor at this historic gathering. There will be Christians and Muslims alike, and I'm looking forward with expectation and joy at the same time. But with just 48 hours before the Pope arrives, there's much to be done. Muhammad Yusuf has been chosen to lead the ceremonial cavalry in honor of the Pope. Today is his final rehearsal. We make sure everything will be perfect. We have uh, like 34 horses. I will be on the first horses in the front. It's very close to the car. We are behind the car. We hold the flags. There is a four flags, and I will hold the Ministry of Interior flag. The captains choose me for this. When I was young, I dreamed for this. Mohammed is not the only one preparing for the visit. At Al Khansa School, a group of pupils are enjoying a change from their usual classes. It was the school assembly, and we were all lining up. Then our sports teacher came and singled us out. And here I actually got kind of scared. I thought I was in trouble, but... Me too. <laughs> then she let us go at the back of the whole thing, and she told us that you're going to go see Bob Francis. These girls have been selected to give the Pope a traditional Bahraini welcome. It's actually weird. 
Because it's like Bubba Francis. It's like a French name and then yeah. like an uh, English name and then a British And Bubba in, in uh, Arabic, it's actually dad. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. So it's very, very weird. Who is Bubba Francis? Ah. Bubba Francis is a Okay. It's a proud moment for Principal Iman Yaqub al Sis. This is the same thing. 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 For these girls, it's not just a chance to take part in pageantry. It's opening their eyes to a wider world. I can't believe that I'm going to meet the king and meet, meet uh, Baba Fran Francis. This is one of the biggest moments that my life does. <laughs> Relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Vatican date back many years. The first encounter was in 2014, when His Majesty the King was invited to meet with the Pope. Six years later, his Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, made his way to the Vatican. And to set the seal on this friendship, His Majesty the King made an extraordinary gesture. His Majesty the King visited the Vatican and he himself, the King, uh, donated a piece of land to build the Lady of Arabia Cathedral and he helped to see it come to reality. Opened in 2021, Our Lady of Arabia Cathedral is the largest of its kind in the Arabian Gulf. Designed in Bahrain, yet built with Italian marble, it represents harmony between East and West. And when I saw of this church, I said to the Pope once in a private audience, I didn't want to be a bishop, but if I have to be a bishop, I prefer to be in Arabia, not back home. The cathedral is a focal point for the largest Catholic population in all of the region. And they too are joining the preparations for the Pope's visit. Are you planning to go for the papal visit? How many of you registered? Huh? Okay. The Pope's arrival is imminent, and few are more excited than those he will visit at a local Catholic school. The Pope, he's an international figure and he's the head of the church. He's very important to all of us, and uh, we all travel to Rome to see the Pope, and he's coming to our country. For both the teachers and pupils, it's all hands on deck. All of us are very much enthusiastic and eagerly waiting for this event of uh, Pope Francis visiting our school. Uh, we are so proud we being chosen to be visited by His Holiness. It's a dream coming true. While many of the pupils will catch a glimpse of the Pope, one lucky girl will get to speak to him in person. But we have a choice, and I choose not to let my emotions control you. I was amazed. You know, it's not something that happens every day. The Pope is coming to your school, right? Becoming a teenager involves entering a stage of life that brings about many unfamiliar experiences. 15-year-old Marina Motta has chosen to convey a heartfelt message about teenage life. In these moments, what we need the most is guidance. As a teenager, we're told, 
we throw a lot of tantrums and stuff. Nobody really considers our problems as a big thing, but they are a big thing. Never do we wish to walk alone, and never do we- While Marina practices her lines, elsewhere, anticipation is building. At Bahrain's National Stadium, crews are working into the night. This week, the venue will host 30,000 people for a Catholic mass led by the Pope himself. Among those getting ready are the musicians and members of the choir. Most people have that misconception of the Gulf region, thinking that there are no churches here, Christianity doesn't exist here. And I think the Pope coming here, it's already a sign, it's an indication that uh, great things are happening here in the Gulf. It has ever been my wish to see the Pope physically, and I'm, I don't know what, how I'm going to feel on that day. We're going to be like clapping and cheering, and it's just going to be like, oh, it's like the whole... Catholic community, along with the others, are just going to be cheering on Pope Francis, you know. You are my life, in three four. Jesus Christ, you are my life. Tonight is the choir's final rehearsal. And for Charlene Andrade in particular, this event means more than most. It's going to be my uh, 25th birthday <laughs> and uh, when I heard the news I was making plans for my birthday but then I, I just cancelled everything and I said no, this is where I need to be. <laughs> it's the closest we can be to the Holy Father. Charlene's choir have come together from all corners of Bahrain. We are a 100-member choir. We come from different nationalities, uh, India, Africa, Philippines. We are singing in English and in Latin, and then there's Arabic, Hindi, Tagalog, and uh, African language as well. The complexion of the choir is a reflection of Bahrain itself. A cosmopolitan kingdom composed across centuries and millennia. Bahrain's past can be traced back 4,000 years. In the north of the archipelago are burial mounds that date back to the Dilmun period. One of the oldest records of human civilization, the ancient poem, The Epic of Gilgamesh, described it as the land of immortality. But the richest evidence of how Bahrain would evolve as a nation can be found here. Archaeologists began excavating the site at Kalat al-Bahrain in the 1950s and have discovered a number of vital clues to Bahrain's past. During our excavation, they found a jar with around 310 coins similar to this one. Dr. Salman al-Mahari is an archaeologist. Of his many finds at the site, one holds the key to understanding the origins of Bahrain's cosmopolitan culture. This is a Greek silver coin produced and minted here in the region. When you hold an artifact similar to this, dated back to thousands, hundreds of years, you can't describe the feelings that you have the moment you are holding this. This is the, the happiest moment of the archaeologist when they find an artifact which give more information about the ancient civilization they were looking for. 
The coin was evidence that the original site was an ancient harbor, a key trading point between Bahrain and the ancient Greeks. And the Bahraini commodity that was prized above all others was pearls. The Greeks wrote a lot about Bahrain, about the quality of the pearls in Bahrain, the clearance of these pearls in the sea or in the coastline of Bahrain. Valued for their delicate size and shimmering glow, Bahraini pearls were considered unique and were reserved for only the most artful and intricate jewelry. And where the Greeks led, other nations followed. Bahrain's growing pearl industry would transform the country into a true melting pot of cultures. We're talking about exchanging goods, exchanging cultures, religions, different languages. So it's all of these kind of crossroads of civilizations can be understood from these coins found in the island of Bahrain. Now Bahrain is set to cross paths with its latest newcomer. Only this time, the visit will be broadcast across the globe. The uh, Pope's airplane has arrived at the Air Base from uh, Flamencino International Airport in Rome a few hours ago and is now arriving at the Sakhir Air Base in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Well, this is going to be an extraordinary few days here in Bahrain. The theme of the journey to Bahrain is peace on earth to people of goodwill. At exactly 4.45, Flanked by the ceremonial guard, His Majesty the King is standing by, here to extend the hand of friendship to the Pope. We have His Majesty the King, uh, we have the Pope of the Catholic Church, all coming to this island uh, to send a message to the entire world. And, and I, 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 for one, I, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be very exciting. These are both a men of action, and my guess is they're going to hit it off uh, very, very quickly. There we are, there's Pope Francis. His, his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is welcoming His Holiness Pope Francis of the Vatican on his arrival in the Kingdom of Bahrain. So good to see you again. So kindly received me at the Vatican. We're so honored you are here. They are, in effect, role models from different cultures spreading ideas of coexistence between different cultures. Right now, all roads lead to Bahrain. A meeting of two worlds. It's a moment to savor. But a far grander spectacle awaits. The Pope will soon be guest of honor at an official welcome ceremony at the Royal Palace. And here, some are more than a little excited. Among them are the girls from Al Hansa Primary School. Each girl has been given a basket of traditional Bahraini confetti, made of scented basil and rose, to lay at the feet of the Pope and His Majesty. Entering the gates of the royal palace, the Pope is accompanied by a 30-strong guard of honor on horseback. Hey, 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 hey. 
And as day turns to night, the kingdom of Bahrain comes together to greet a pope for the very first time. In Bahrain, we feel happy when there is a big day. We like giving the best experience and the best hospitality that we can give to our guests. Before the official welcoming ceremony can begin, in a private room within the palace, the event is marked with the exchanging of gifts. In the courtyard of the royal palace, the Pope receives a king's welcome. And for His Majesty, it's a chance to set out his vision for the papal visit. حضور الكريم باسمنا وباسم جميع أهل البحرين الكرام يسعدنا أن نرحب بقداستكم في مملكة البحرين ضيفا كريما عزيزا ويهمنا قداستكم بأن تتعرفوا خلال زيارتكم على أهم ما تتميز به بلادنا بحس ما توضحه شواهد اليوم كأرض حاضنة للتعايش المشترك بين أتباع الديانات المختلفة In return, the Pope alights on the symbolism behind Bahrain's Tree of Life. A tutti esprimo la mia gioia per essere tra voi. Preparandomi a questo viaggio, sono venuto a conoscenza di un emblema di, di, un emblema di vitalità. Mi riferisco al cosiddetto albero della vita, il quale racconta di una terra estremamente antica, alla quale già millenni fa Le genti accorrevano attirate dalla sua bellezza. Qui dove le acque del mare circondano le savie del deserto, antichità e modernità, storia e progresso si fondono. Soprattutto genti di varie provenienze formano un originale mosaico di vita. Maestà, ad essere reali, autorità, amici, Impegniamoci ovunque e davvero per la pace, per ripudiare ciò che divide e avvicinare invece ciò che ci unisce. Sia così con la benedizione dell'Altissimo. Shukran. That's very Bahraini to have all the different faiths here listening with huge interest to what His Holiness had to say, what His Majesty had to say, and then before and after the ceremony, everybody getting together from all faiths. And that's, again, Bahrain playing its role as an open space where you can talk about these things, where freedom of religion and belief is real. As the ceremony draws to a close, the girls from Alhansa Primary School prepare for their big moment. Is 
that had something very special. It was also very exciting and it was also kind of nerve wracking. This is amazing because I actually looked at the king. You don't have these moments often in this world, so I'm just very grateful for this. To younger and innocent eyes, this is a unique experience. But this meeting of faiths echoes a much earlier encounter that happened many centuries ago. Islam arrived in Bahrain early in the 7th century. An envoy sent by the Prophet himself inspired the people to join the Muslim faith. Testament to the power of this new religion remains. The Al Khamis Mosque is one of the oldest surviving Islamic sites in the region. Founded within living memory of the Prophet, it announced Bahrain as a great center of Islam. It was long thought this new faith soon eclipsed the old. But recent discoveries suggest a different story. Close to Al Hamis is the ancient settlement at Samahij. Leading the excavations here is British archaeologist Tim Insol. The site itself here dates from the 6th to 8th centuries. The historical sources date from about, I think it's about 410 onwards. And that's why this site is so important in terms of thinking about the origins of Islam. Just a year ago, Tim made an extraordinary discovery. I think it came out of that room there, which is the sort of living room. And it, what it was is a small shirt, one of these fragments of pottery. And one was being washed, appeared on it, uh, a beautiful cross. So this was the first concrete indicator that we had of Christianity in Bahrain. Tim's findings not only proved that Christianity existed in Bahrain long before Islam, but that for centuries, both faiths lived side by side. It's proving that this has been a cosmopolitan, multi-faith, multicultural society, which is quite a breakthrough. It really is. It is now 48 hours since the Pope arrived in Bahrain. Today, the historic ties between Islam and Christianity are to be honored at an extraordinary meeting within the grounds of the royal palace. The most senior figure in the Islamic faith is Eminence Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Dr. Ahmed Al-Tayeb, is chairing a meeting of the Muslim Council of Elders in the presence of His Holiness, Pope Francis. Dr. Mohammed Abdul Salam is among those in attendance. كان اجتماعا استثنائيا كانت لحظة مهمة ولحظة فارقة لعلي لا أعد الحقيقة لأن أزمة عالمنا المعاصر هي في المقام الأول أزمة أخلاق وأزمة إلحاد معا As the world watches on the meeting could not be more timely 
Vengo a voi come credente in Dio, come fratello e pellegrino di pace. Un futuro di fraternità davanti a un passato di ostilità, superando i pregiudizi e le incomprensioni della storia in nome di colui che è fonte di pace. Al Qarn al Hadi wal Ashrin, mali di tahadiyat il lati tuarrak al Shaub, la dayna azamat mutahadida. We shouldn't forget we are living in a critical moment. To live as good Christians among the Muslims and or not to quarrel with them and or not among them and not with them. And I think that is uh, something we have to do. Assalam wa al firdaus alladhi na'amaluhu wa nasa'a ilayhi fi al hayat al dunya. As preparations for the Papal Mass continue, the Itonga family are warming up. Originally from Cameroon, Antoine, his wife Prudencia and their son Alberto have been living in Bahrain for the past six years. We come from a culture where singing is part of us. Singing is part of the African culture. If you notice most of Africans, we sing unconsciously. Even when we're walking on the streets, we sing unconsciously. Now, bringing that again, singing is part of our faith. All the, yeah, all the males in the choir is the gown. And I think we ask to put on a white shirt and a red tie. It's so easy light to move with. <laughs> it's just and this a gown. one is for the ladies, still yeah. for the choir. The Vatican flag, yes. the Bahrain flag, then this tree in the middle stands for peace. So. Yeah. I'm so happy that I'm here in Bahrain and the Pope is coming to Bahrain. So if, if I don't touch him, I just believe that if I just see him, I believe that I've seen God, everything will be okay with me. Since I sing in the choir, we're going to be closer to the Pope. As, as my wife said, even if we don't have the opportunity of touching him, but at least that joy is there. But Antoine and Prudencia won't be the only family members involved. I will be serving in the Mass and I will hold the mic for him, so it feels <laughs> good. I'll be, I'll be the closest to the Pope. Yeah, yeah. I really do envy him. I mean, when, when I got the story, that when, when I was told that he's the altar server, then he was going to hold the mic, I was just like saying, oh, had it been, I had the chance, maybe we'll swap position. <laughs> because he's actually, he's really going to get closer to the Pope than all of us. <laughs> During his time in Bahrain, the Pope's visit takes him to the heart of the kingdom's Catholic community. His Holiness Pope Francis is arriving now uh, to the Lady of Arabia Cathedral. At Our Lady of Arabia Cathedral, he meets with senior Christian leaders from across the region. And in the center of Manama, those who regularly worship at the Sacred Heart the oldest Catholic church in the Gulf, also get their chance to see him. But for one member of Bahrain's Catholic community, there's an event that means more than any other. Anything else? Anything else for us? In just a few hours, teenager Marina will deliver her personal message to Pope Francis. Today's the day. I woke up this morning and I was already feeling like it's going to be a different day. Something different is going to happen. Marina has been practicing every day, so she's word perfect for her big moment. Sometimes when I get a little nervous, I start like speaking really fast. So I'm just like hoping I go nice and slow, enjoy every moment. <laughs> and I hope that everyone can understand what I say. Marina's school will be the first school in the Arabian Gulf to host the Pope. It's an historic day for teachers and pupils alike. My 
my parents, they told me that what I'm doing now, it's not an opportunity everybody gets. Whatever you are saying, you have to do it to the best of your ability. Good evening, Holy Father. It is a great privilege for me, Marina Mota, to stand here in the presence of Your Holiness, Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome, and Head of the Catholic Church. We are elated to have you here today and hope that the occasion of your visit will bring many blessings. Becoming a teenager involves entering a stage of life that brings about many unfamiliar experiences. In these moments, what we need the most is guidance. It's a white rosary. It's very beautiful, honestly. It's something like a momentum of this historical event. I was so nervous. Like I was shivering all over. I was so scared. I just keep shivering and shivering. I might fall. Everything was going through my mind, like every accident that could happen. And I was just telling myself, you will do good. You will do great. And then I did it. I was so happy. His Holiness the Pope's meeting with the youth at the Sacred Heart School where he addressed around, we think, about 2,000 young people of various religions and they look extremely happy. While the Pope has been in Bahrain, a great meeting of religious leaders has been taking place. Their hope? To find common ground and build a road map for global peace. I come here with great hope that we as religious leaders are going to continue to work to make religion a solution, not the cause of the problem. With the forum coming to a close, today sees the climax of the event, to be held in the grounds of the Royal Palace. at a sacred site of national celebration and mourning. In just two hours' time, it will play host to a historic moment. In front of the world's media, King Hamad, the Pope, and the Grand Imam will deliver together a manifesto for peace. We are covering the production with 12 cameras. So we have the downlink from the channel and that we can see when we are on air and when we are not on air. The ceremony will be start around 10. Directing the coverage is Paolo Resende. Yeah, Adron, we have picture. These type of events um, are always a little bit tricky to work uh, because we have a lot of protocols and we have a lot of things that sometimes we don't control. So we put our plan, we put our plan A, B, C, and sometimes you need to go to DE. <laughs> but not everyone has the luxury of a backup plan. Standing by to do his duty is Cavalry Officer Mohammed. We are waiting uh, for the first uh, the king will pass and we will salute for the king of Bahrain. And then the Pope will pass. We will travel with the Pope. When it comes to escorting the Pope, there are no second chances. This is what we born for it. And this is what we train for it. For this protocol for the Kingdom of Bahrain. As the motorcade pulls away, Mohammed and his team are at close quarters. The eyes of the world are again on Bahrain this morning, where His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa is hosting the two most prominent religious figures. With a seamless escort, Mohammed delivers King Hamad, the Pope, 
and the Grand Imam to the gates of the square. Hadassat al-Baba Francis, Baba al-Vatican, His Holiness Pope Francis of the Vatican. We've got three leaders in different fields of human endeavor, bringing, coming together. For Mohammed, it's mission accomplished, and with it, a sense of pride, not just for his country, but his family too. My father was do this till his last days in the Minister of Interior. When I was a child, yeah, I was, I was watching the TV and I was watching him, he was, he was on the horses, yeah? And now he is watching me. I'm very proud for this. As the cavalry return to their stables, the event gets underway. Your Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, King of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Your Holiness, Pope Francis of the Vatican. Your Eminence, Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib, Grand Imam of Al Azhar and Chairman of the Muslim Council of Elders. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests. A very good morning and welcome to this prestigious gathering. I've always been the official English-speaking MC for the king. So whenever anyone comes from outside, any president or something, if there is any um, event like this and they need an English-speaking MC, so I'm the one, I'm the go-to. I'm already a newsreader on Bahrain TV. Qadasat al-Baba Francis, Baba al-Vatikan. Fadilat al-Imam al-Akbar, al-Doktor Ahmed al-Tayyib. Sheikh Al Azhar Al Sharif, Ashab Al Fadila Wal Ulama Min Mumathil Al Adyan, Hur Al Kareem, Salamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. It's one thing to be on TV behind cameras, but it's a complete different thing to be in the presence of His Majesty the King. And it's always been a great honor and something that I really cherish very much. The diversity of people here. It's amazing. This spectacle of diversity is a sight to behold. But it's just a reflection of what modern Bahrain has become. In the capital city of Manama are a series of sacred sites that date back to the 18th century. Cemeteries for many different religions existing side by side. The Christian cemetery is just behind the walls. We are here in the Jewish cemetery. We are in the same land, but we have small walls to separate really the cemeteries. In this land of immortality, we all we are all together, near to each other, like in life. البحرين يعني منذ القرن الثامن عشر أصبحت فيها أقوام وشعوب من خلفيات إثنية متنوعة فأصبح هناك أوروبيين وفد إلى البحرين الكثير من البريطانيين عاشوا في البحرين الكثير من الأوروبيين أمريكان أيضا. And the beautiful thing is like we have Arabic names and European or Latino American names. It means that they came from everywhere in the world to this beautiful land and to live here and to be here till the end of the world. Jews, Christians and Muslims side by side at peace. And what happens in the hereafter finds its rhyme on the streets of modern Manama. The capital Manama, for example, there is the mosque, there is the church, there is the temple, and they are almost near each other. They are neighbors dealing with each other, and we learn to live together and love each other. In honor of Bahrain's history of religious coexistence, His Majesty the King took a visionary step. In 2017, he commissioned the Bahrain Declaration a blueprint for different faiths to live together in peace. It has been signed by religious leaders from around the world. 
Under the gaze of the world's media, the Pope references the declaration in his closing speech. La dichiarazione del Regno di Bahrain spiega che Dio ci ha indirizzati verso il dono divino della libertà e della scelta. Egli illumini i nostri passi e congiunga i nostri cuori, le nostre menti e le nostre forze, perché all'adorazione di Dio corrisponda l'amore concreto e fraterno al prossimo, per essere insieme profeti di convivenza, artefici di unità e costruttori di pace. Grazie. A one word summary would be wow. I mean, it was incredible to hear people from different perspectives and different backgrounds essentially agreeing. Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, thank you very much for joining us today. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The time has come to bid farewell to Bahrain. But before he leaves, the Pope has one last engagement. It's 5 a.m. and for Joseph Andrade and other members of Bahrain's Christian faithful, it's an early start to a very special day. They're going to the Bahrain National Stadium for the People Mass. It's people Mass like a pilgrimage. It's uh, astounding that this is happening in the country. They have been waiting for this moment for a long time. Joseph is on his way not just to see the Pope, but to see his daughter Charlene perform in the choir. Good luck, all the best. Good luck. Yeah. Sing well. Let the Pope hear you. Okay. God bless. Drawn from all corners of the Gulf, 30,000 people have filled Bahrain's national stadium. And members of the royal family are also joining the Pope for the occasion. Never before has the country hosted a Christian event on this scale. It's a big moment for Joseph's daughter, Charlene. Everyone's here and everyone's excited. And I just hope that everything goes well, that we reach the hearts of everyone and Pope Francis looks at us. <laughs> it's, a, it's an important moment for every Catholic who's here. Right on time, the Pope enters the stadium. It's a welcome fit for a rock star. We go straight over to Bahrain National Stadium now, where His Holiness the Pope has arrived. praise the Lord twice. The hymns are words from the Bible. That is why I feel that it gives so much peace. Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. 
I wish to thank His Majesty Sheikh Hamad bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, the King of Bahrain, along with the royal family. God bless. I was crying. I felt so blessed. Unbelievable. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Congrats, my boy. Congratulations. You're so proud of me. What we saw there was the most extraordinary diversity within the Catholic Church and, of course, in, in Bahrain uh, more widely. We do believe that it is really very valuable and we are really very happy and proud that he accepted the invitation of Bahrain. As the Pope bids farewell, he leaves behind a host of lasting memories. I feel like this is what we're born for us. This is a moment of change for me. It inspires me. At a time of great uncertainty, the Pope and King have sent a message from Bahrain to the world. We are Muslims, we are Christians, and we are Jews, and we are Hindus, and we are everybody living together. We have a model of interfaith dialogue, a model of peaceful coexistence. And this model, we want to share it with everyone. And that's really what makes the world go round, this diversity and this richness. And we learn from each other day by day. Every person in this life has a lot of challenges and difficulties. And so, the real peace begins from the peace of the self. The human being, the human being, the human being, the human being, the human being. أن السلام هو الفردوس المفقود. in the kingdom. Pope Francis.